second reading is taken from Luke chapter 23, beginning at verse 32. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing, and they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him, and they said, He saved others, let himself save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled up insults at him. Are you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting our de de what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, David, and God is going to come and preach for us. Father, we pray that um, you will draw us near to you. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see, the wonders that are in your world. And we ask it in Jesus' precious, powerful name. Amen. Amen. Well, the question that we're dealing with this morning is deathbed repentance, and I have added the word stroke confusion. And it finishes with, is it fair? So, using scripture, we have considered some principles that every Christian should be addicted to. I've used that word addicted on purpose. These prim principles, I believe, should be practiced habitually by every believer. We can learn from, from the book of Jonah, for he is in a situation where God calls him to preach repentance to the people of Nineveh. Jonah turns down this assignment because he knows that God's mercy would be quite likely follow his preaching. Now, Jonah knew in his heart that God was sending him because in his love, God's love, he wanted to give the people of Nineveh the opportunity to repent, to turn back to him, to walk away from their sinful ways and turn back to God and walk in his ways. This is his first step, Jonah's first step in disobedience and in waywardness. Then he tries to run away from God, but God tosses him into the water. And yet, God still shows his mercy and his protection, using a big fish, a large fish, to house Jonas, Jonah for three days. By doing this, God gives Jonah three days to reflect on his actions and to pray to God. And this causes Jonah to realize that God is serious about his command for Nineveh to hear the words of the Lord. So he goes and he preaches, and although his preaching is blessed by God, and the people do listen to what he says, Job becomes angry, and he becomes discouraged. There are three things that we can learn from this this morning. Watch out for anger. And I actually have a problem with that at times, if I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, my tongue speaks before my mind engages and I talk too quickly. But watch out for anger. So often it tells us that we are reacting in the flesh. 
we are thinking that our thinking is right and we want God to do something and we want him to do it in our way not in his way and secondly discouragement can lead to wrong choices being made hasty and not prayerfully thought through decisions are usually the outcome so we need to be aware and we need to be prepared so that we can avoid these pitfalls when we come across them. And thirdly, always keep in mind God's compassionate heart. Remember his love and his compassion to you. And that we are to pass on that same compassion, that same love, that depth of love to everyone. God brings across our path. This then brings the question to us all. In any situation, is my thinking, is my attitude the same as Jonah's? And I would like you to take a very brief moment or two and just close your eyes and think about that. Ask God that question and wait for a little while. Let God answer you with that. And if God points something out to you that he wants changed in your life and in mine, then make every effort to do that. So let's close our eyes and just think for the moment. Is my attitude in any way the same as students? <coughs> You know, when I do this at home, in that silence, I can always feel the presence of God. God loves us to take time with Him, even if it's just to sit with Him. But He loves that I believe when we ask Him questions like that. And He always answers. We may not always like the answer, but He always answers. And it's well worth dealing with whatever Christ points out to us. So if your answer is yes, I would say to you this morning, please don't feel down about that. Instead, be encouraged. Let's be positive in the Word of God. For you now know this morning that some of the principles that the teaching of Scripture gives us on how to deal with these issues when we come across them. And the second point we learn about is mercy. And the teaching on this is found in Matthew 18, verses 24 to 35. And I'm using the message translation and also the parable of the unmerciful servant to teach us some more principles that we can put into practice. And you know, after Peter, it says, asked Jesus, how many times do I forgive a brother or a sister? And Jesus replies, 70 times 7. And my understanding of that is that it means continuously. But it doesn't mean that we accept the wrongdoing, either in our own lives or in anyone else's. We cannot condone sin. But we gently and lovingly either pray for them first of all or talk to them and just hope that they give us an opening to do that. And when we get that opportunity, I call them God appointments. When we get one of those, let's be faithful to God. Let's be faithful to God's word. But Jesus then goes on to talk of a servant brought before a king because he had debts of a hundred thousand dollars and he couldn't pay it back so the king ordered the man his wife and his children and his goods to be auctioned off at the slave market and the man then threw himself at the king's feet and he begged him for a chance to pay it all back and touched by his plea the king let him off 
He erases every cent of that debt. However, this servant was no sooner out of that room when he came upon one of his fellow servants who owed him a mere ten dollars. And what does he do? After being given the debt that he had been forgiven, a hundred thousand dollars, he seizes a man by the throat and he demands, pay up now. And this man now begs also for a chance to pay up. <coughs> Do you know that first servant that had been forgiven so much wouldn't do it? And he had him arrested and put in jail. And when the other servants saw this, they were outraged and gave a detailed report to the king. And the king summons the man and he said, You evil servant, I forgave your entire debt when you begged me for mercy. Shouldn't you be compelled to be merciful to your fellow servant who asked you for mercy? So the furious king put the screws to the man until he paid back his entire debt. debt. And then Jesus said, and that's exactly what my Father in heaven is going to do to each one of you who does not forget who does not show mercy. <coughs> and you know the forgiveness and the mercy that God has shown us, we have to show it back to others. Not always easy for us to do. And I believe in being honest with God and with ourselves pays dividends. But it means forgive unconditionally. Think about that word. We are to show mercy and forgiveness unconditionally to anyone who asks for mercy. This is God's way. It may not always be ours, but it's God's way. So let's recap. What have we covered in God's word so far? From Jonah will we understand that we're called like Jonah to preach repentance to all. And that doesn't mean someone who stands in the pulpit. That means every single person sitting in the pews here today, every child of God is called to talk about repentance to the unsaved, to those who are unjust, to those who don't know Christ. Because that's our first step to salvation. From Jonah then we understand that call. And I hope we all put it into practice. We have seen God's protection, therefore his mercy, even during Jonah's period of disobedience. You know I absolutely love that. Because when I am disobedient, God is still obedient. God is still faithful. And he gently draws me back. And I hope and I know we can do you if we allow him to come back to him, come back into his favour to walk in it, to know his presence with us, and to the joy, have that joy of our salvation. So we've also learned to avoid anger, watch out for depression, and also to keep our thoughts, in our thoughts, God's heart of mercy. From scripture we know that Jesus wiped out our debt of sin completely by his death on the cross. And here in Matthew 18, we must not ignore that God expects us, every one of us, to show the same mercy to others that he has shown us. And going back to the reading in Luke 23, verse 34, 7, he comments in this way. He says, to hold spite, to plan reprisals, to live for revenge, is to cripple oneself at the core, the very core, of one's being. And if we bring that stab or that wound in our spirit to Calvary, we see how Jesus dealt with hatred, destroying it, but destroying it with forgiveness, quelling it with love. And he can help us and is willing and eager to help each one of us do the same thing. 
These may not be words that you want to hear this morning because they're challenging words. They challenge me, cause me to stop and to think, to ask myself questions. So, is deathbed repentance that leads to conversion fair? That was our question this morning. So, we learn a lot from this passage and these passages about the very nature of God. We have observed how he thinks, how he acts. We have seen from the story of Jonah and the, the parable of the unmerciful servant, how amazing, how immeasurable is the mercy of our God. I thank God for that this morning because I enjoy that mercy and I hope you do too. We have come to understand from the teaching in Scripture that precious mercy that is there available for each one of us. But God expects you and I to show that same mercy and that same love to others. Also that each one of us will be accountable to Almighty God. There is a day coming when we will have to account for every word spoken, every action that you and I have done. Therefore, we must conclude that it is God's nature to have mercy. Therefore, dead, deathbed repentance and conversion is acceptable and it is fair according to God's word that you have heard this morning. Let us pray. Father, we ask you this morning You've given us so much, but we're asking for more. Help us, Lord, in our daily living to put all of these principles that we've heard this morning, all of your teaching from your word, into practice so that we may bring honour and glory to your name and as always, Father, to delight your heart. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. Now we're going to stand and sing, longing for night we wait in darkness.
Not the physical emotional pain or weighed down with worry and despair. In a moment of silence we bring to you, Father, those on our hearts and minds, amongst our friends and families and loved ones and our parish. <coughs> God of Advent, hope will you restore and replenish them, comfort and freedom. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Finally, <coughs> loving Father, we commend to your love those who have died. Loved ones we especially miss at this time, whose memories are treasure. May they and we in our turn experience forever the joy of your eternity. <clears throat> our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light which can quench our darkness. And today we remember and hold in our hearts particularly the family of John Sherry and Janet Crilly. Lord, you turn our darkness into light. In your light shall we see light. We continue our prayers with our morning colleagues and let us say them together. Lord, Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and ever living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And then all things guide us to know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go before us, Lord. Go before us, Lord, in all our dreams, with your most gracious favor, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally by your mercy. Today, everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> now we come to our Jesus. And the first thing I have to say is, how beautiful is the church? We were not stunned when we came in and saw it. It's just so beautiful. And we just thank the girls, thank you, Anne, and thank you, Dara, for all your very hard work in getting it prepared for us and for our carol services this evening and over Christmas. Thank you. It's wonderful. And again, I noticed about the toys. Thank you for your generosity in bringing all these toys to be distributed in our community. And we were to distribute them tomorrow morning at 10. But as you see, um, Janet's funeral will be at 10 tomorrow. And so we will be distributing the toys, taking them to Tesco or Curry's uh, on Tuesday morning and will be collected in the hall at 10 a.m. Uh, there's a final car practice today directly after this service. And tonight our car service is at 6 30. There's still plenty of room for that one if you want to come along. If you want to do two services, you're very welcome. Uh, there are not so many places left on the 18th. We're having our actual coffee morning on Tuesday at 10.30 in the memorial room. Uh, please, even if you don't join us on Zoom, you're very welcome to come and join us in person uh, in the memorial room on Tuesday morning at 10.30. Our community friendship party is on Wednesday from 1 to 4 uh, for those who have a birthday face. And our Advent course session 3 starts at 7.30 in the memorial room uh, when we'll be discussing today's sermon. And there are always interesting and lively discussions that take place at that meeting, so please do come along to that and enjoy a little bit of reflection as well at the Advent service, um, a little Advent liturgy which you'll be enjoying also on that night. Thursday we have our indoor holy and our knitting bee, uh, as usual. And then we're having our nursing home services on the 15th of December on Thursday at 2 p.m. Um, uh, in uh, the Glee and Dunani uh, and Glen Abbey. So uh, for Glen Abbey we meet at 1.45. We usually meet um, 15 minutes before.
before the service starts. And you receive the dates, the 15th and the 19th for those Christmas services. And we do love for you to come along. And there's some of you who do come along and share with the people a little bit of your a little bit of your cheer. So that would be very good. Saturday we have our faith back in Nativity rehearsal and then the children are off to the pantomime. So that will be an afternoon for them and we're so looking forward um, next week to our Nativity play. We don't know what it's about, I think it's a big surprise. Wednesday the 21st, um, we're holding a little communion service in the memorial room. The people who can't get out to the service will be collecting and bringing them in and maybe a little refreshment after, after the service. So if any of the congregation could come along to that, we'd just love to see other people there too and see friends who we have met for a while across their house too. And you'll see the uh, dates and times of Janet and John Terry's funerals in your notices. So just take them through, read the rest of your notices there, our calendar up for 2023 so you can um, put your um, names on there and CMS Ireland is at the back of the church and anybody who gets that. And the family review, the Harry will be making it by Tuesday morning, the 20th of December. And you have your Christmas service times there too. So that's quite a lot of so let's just take a few moments to just reflect on what Valerie was telling us, just reflect on maybe what God has been speaking to us this morning in our service. Just to bring ourselves down again after all those notices. And just to enjoy a few seconds of quiet with them.
remain with you and with all those whom you love, this day and forevermore. Amen. Our Lord says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Thank you for being with us for our service of morning prayer this morning and our apologies that the first part of the service didn't record. Uh, the reading you heard read was by David Gibson. Our service was led by the Reverend Carol Harvey. The preacher was Valerie Murray and our organist was David Rutherford. So thank you for being with us. Uh, we hope you join us next week, which is our family service uh, led by our children as they do their nativity. <laughs>